Hi, this is Mike Brown, owner of Death Wish Coffee Company. Welcome to Fueled by Deathcast. I love Java, sweet and high. Death Wish Coffee presents Fueled by Deathcast, the world's strongest podcast. With your hosts, the incredible Jeff and the amazing D Man. It's Fueled by Deathcast! Woohoo! I'm ready to throw some punches. Let me get some more coffee in first. <laughs> Please just take it down a little bit. Never! <laughs> I've had way too much coffee today, but it's good. It's episode 59 for all of you keeping score at home. I don't Is there know anybody what... at home keeping score? That'd if be they are, <laughs> please tell us if we're winning. Because... Ooh, one more. <laughs> oh, they're closer, yes. Oh, man. Um, as always, I am the incredible Jeff. And I'm uh, under the weather D-man. Yeah, but you're still amazing in my book. Yeah. Um, you can follow us both on social media. It's very easy. I am at Jeff Wish Coffee. And I am at Death Wish Dustin. That's how easy that is. We start off every single episode of Fueled by Deathcast, the show, with a chance to win something awesome. And this time it's two things. Uh, last year we came out with the Abe Lincoln mug and a canner set, and we're giving one away. This time, all you got to do is share this show and comment shared in the comments. We'll pick one of you commenters at random at the end. I think for the first time ever, I'm not going to kiss this one. Okay, yeah. If you're under the weather, D-Man, I think that's good. I I don't want to get the mug sick, you know? Then you're going to get this most special mug ever because... (laughs) Oh, you want it less now, (laughs) don't you? (laughs) But yeah, the mug and the decanter that we tried out um, came out last year. Uh, We really liked them, and we had a couple. It's funny, like, we'll sell out of a mug, and then we'll do inventory in the warehouse, and it'll be like, oh, where did There's, like, three, like, nestled away in a box or something. I always love doing those because it's like, ooh, what mugs are we going to find that we can give away on the show? So uh, we recently did a physical inventory around our warehouses, and we got a few surprises, and we're starting off with this one. We had a couple of these laying around. But, uh, dude, just wait until you see the design this year for I know. around uh, this <laughs> time. I'm not allowed to talk nope. about it, but I know. But we're excited. Um, <laughs> and we're excited for the show, as always. we got to start the show by thanking our good friend Brock Powell. BrockVox.com. That's right. He's the voice actor on all the cool voices on this show, including a ton of other stuff. In fact, I was just telling you, D-Man Off Pod, uh, he's got a new internet cartoon show called the Blurburbs about people who were um uh eaten by a whale and they all started a village and he plays captain nemo in it and it's hilarious where do they find their food source just i uh, after the 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 whale eats like garbage and food they get all of that and then they eat it yeah yeah it's great it's a crazy cartoon you can find it online <laughs> i'll probably put a, a link up actually so you can see it's it. right here yeah there it is Um, Also, thanks to our friends over at Black Magic Design. They are the makers of all the awesome technology that we use to create this show and make two dummies like us make a cool show like this, right? Dummies is uh, like uh, softballing it. Softballing it. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. For sure. (laughs) For sure. Secret code unlocked. Discount of death. So this week, if you type in the code magic in your discount code area you'll get 15 percent off of everything on our website and that is because we have somebody from our very own employee staff on the podcast this it's week the first one of season two but if you listened or watched the show back in season one you know that every month we like to put a spotlight on one of the awesome people that works here at death wish hq and when we do that it is a Code that gives you 15% off of everything on the site. And that code this week is MAGIC. This will run until Wednesday, January 31st. If you use it after that, it won't work. Don't get mad at me. And that is MAGIC, M-A-G-I-C. And Jeff, why don't you tell them why it's (laughs) called MAGIC? It's called MAGIC because we got to talk to our facilities manager and also our good friend, Mr. Brad Thibodeau, and you might know him actually as our very own Brad Scientist. We uh, did a fun thing back in the day where we counted all of the beans in the warehouse, (laughs) and it is three quarters of a billion, which Uh, is a lot Yeah, um, at any given time. 
But Brad's awesome. Uh, one of the reasons why the code is Magic is because he is an avid player of the game, Magic the Gathering, um, and has gotten a lot of our employees into it, too, since he started working here, which is really, really yeah, fun. Yeah, it's like a whole club. It's pretty, it's pretty intense. It's fun. Uh, what's crazy is, though, is uh, Brad, as you will learn by watching the episode tomorrow, uh, is one of your oldest friends. In fact, I think yeah. he is your oldest friend. Or close to it, right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Well, no. Oh, okay. No. Close. Close. Very close. Yeah. Long, right. long time. Yeah. And I've known him now for, for a handful of years, too. We've all been in bands together, and now we all work together, and it's pandemonium, and we were so excited to have him on the show. We have a lot of fun and do a lot of fun stuff with him. And uh, here's a special little sneak peek of that premiering tomorrow, but right here, right now. The Fueled by Death Guest. It was just, you know, when you need shit done, and you need it done meticulously, and you need somebody to intelligently break, you know, something down. Brad's the dude to call. Yeah, um, it's it's funny. I'll, I'll bookend this. Like when I met you, Brad, um, like you mentioned, Dustin, we were in a band called Skeletons of the Piano, and I'll actually sink a little of that in there because we have the wonderful opportunity of owning the rights to that music, so I can actually put it in this episode. <laughs> Um, just a normal band, well, outside of having me, the electric violinist, but, you know, drums, bass, guitar, and, and singing, but we were growing, and we decided that we wanted to have the ability to have two guitars, so one person could take a lead, and immediately, in practice, Dustin, you go, well, I know the perfect guy, but he lives in freaking Massachusetts, because you were in Massachusetts at the time, yep. and um, serendipity in life happened, and you ended up moving back to the area, and uh, I called you immediately. Yeah. yeah, it was it was awesome. Like I remember telling our friend Barney, like the day I decided, I talked to him and I was like, yeah, I I, uh, I think I'm gonna move back to New York. And literally, like the next morning, Dustin called me at like like 8 a.m. or something. He was like, hey man, how's it going? I heard you coming back. And I was like, uh, yeah, yeah, I'm thinking about moving in a couple weeks. He was like, cool. You want to try out for a band? Uh, science. Okay, so science this week is staying on Earth and actually going underneath the Earth. Dude, thinking about these underwater caves uh -huh. is like, it makes me sweaty almost immediately. Because <laughs> you can get in, but are you going to get out in time to yeah. get air? And like, what's in there? What's in there? We don't know. So, so here's the story. Just recently, explorers have found the world's largest underwater cave system. And it happens to be in the Yucatan Peninsula. This is actually a picture of the Yucatan Peninsula from space. And the Yucatan Peninsula is already known for a lot of incredible history of the Earth, geological wonders, if you will. One of those being actually the, um, the crater, which here is a picture of it, that is the asteroid that hit the Earth and cracked the Earth way, 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 way back in the day, and a lot of people believe this is what brought on the end of the age of the dinosaurs. Whoa. This is that crater. Oh, and wow. And what's really neat is I actually found a picture of um, the asteroid, a piece of the, that asteroid that hit the Earth. That's that's a picture of it right there. Dude, that's your doom. Yeah, right? Holy so. Crap. The other thing that um, that area is known for is the ancient Mayan civilization. And that's funny because that actually ties into what we're about to talk about. Um, Dude, all these weird things happen in this one area. Yeah. that's so. And we're about to discover a new weird thing. I don't even know what this says. I'm freaked out when we're talking about places <laughs> that meteors have hit, giant meteors that wiped out everything <laughs> hit, and now we're finding stuff in those caves. Well, even before that asteroid hit the Earth, millions of years ago, this cave system was formed. 
and um, we've known about it, but not really known about it until very recently. And what I'm, and I'll, I'll explain that a little bit further. So we knew about these two separate caves, one of them being called the Dos Ojos, which translates to the two eyes, and the other one being called the Sac Actun, and that it translates to White Cave. And we knew about these two cave systems, but up until last year, we thought they both existed on their own, and that was it. Now we know that they literally interconnect, making the world's largest underwater cave at 216 miles, which is really, Whoa. really cool. This labyrinth of passageways has literally been a secret for millions of years, but now, thanks to the incredible explorers in the Grand Asufero Mayan Project, what or, are you looking at or, there? or GAM, uh, I believe in that photo right there, it is a dinosaur skull, I believe. Uh, yeah. I'm not exactly sure. But they no. found all sorts of cool stuff in this cave system, and we've been uncovering stuff in this cave system for a very long time. But now we know that they're all interconnected. Uh, even though, like I said, the discovery was made in 2017, the explore, exploration director of GAM um, actually has been researching this and has this had this idea for the last 14 years. He thought there might be something that interconnects these two cave systems, and he was right. And now we know that for real. And um, I have a little bit of footage, actually, from National Geographic and GAM that shows uh, them swimming through some of these caves. All I have to say is, is they better be leaving breadcrumbs. Right? What if they get lost? That's what, yeah, dude. You, like, okay, we're coming back around. Well... Now I don't know which way to go. Now I'm lost in this 216-mile tunnel way underwater, and I only have 10 tanks on my back. Yeah, if you saw, those guys were definitely diving with two and four tanks each. Jeez. Um, it's pretty impressive, and it really just makes your imagination run wild because what could we technically find, not only from, you know— um, uh, bones and uh, artifacts that we can right. find under there. But like it was saying in that video, it literally breeds life. Well, it, one key thing in that video is the freshwater creates a large biodiversity. Right. It means there's a lot of things, a lot, a lot of, of things. different things that can be living there. And we're always finding new species and new different types of species that we even know in deep water. We're I, always finding new Jeff, I new can't organisms. get it out of my head that this asteroid hit and it had alien DNA in it. <laughs> and and it they're mixed all living in down with there. the fish DNA down there. And now there's like these alien fish creatures. It's a <laughs> horror movie in the making. <laughs> I'm telling you. Well, some of these, the, the footage and some of the, the photos that they're showing are just incredible because it's not completely underwater. There are like little annexes and caves that, you know, you can come up and kind of walk a little bit and then go back down. And it's just this inner intertwining passageway of, of, of just this labyrinth, this crazy, crazy underwater labyrinth. And this will even blow your mind even Ugh. further, D-Man. So I said earlier that this is connected to the Mayans. And um, the Mayans revered underground caves. They did a lot of their um, uh, sacrifices and sacred rituals down there, as well as in their, their temples. And one of the pictures that I've got up right now is of the, the Kukula... Ku Ku Clan, Ku Ku Clan Temple. Sorry, a little bit. I'll, I'll write it out for you. Uh, is that is actually towards one of their um, their gods, which was a feathered serpent. And what's great is, is if you look at this photo, when the sun hits the stairs just right, it looks like um, a serpent going up those stairs. Wow. The the shadow. And they were really smart as as builders. And this stuff is you know so so ancient, but. They just discovered a secret passageway in this temple that leads down to an underground aquatic reservoir that actually is connected ah, to this whole cave so system. now we're mixing underwater creatures with aliens and mummies? Yes. Get the hell out of here. <laughs> this is... Whoa, is that it? It's I don't think that's exactly it, but that's a good photo of this is this is from the underground cave system. I don't know if that's the one directly under there. Oh or not, man. Yeah. 
That shit's scary. It dude. is really cool. Um, this huge cave represents the most important submerged archaeological site in the world. And that is a direct quote from Guillermo de Anda, the researcher at the National Institute of Anthropology and History and the director of GAM. Um, the bedrock in this whole cave system is comprised of thick limestone, a rock that gives way to erosion more easily than most, and particularly when the water is acidic. Um, and because of all of this, the, the acidity, the rainfall, the way that it would eat away at the rock is the why all of this cave system kind of Weird. exists. So they're probably expanding every day. Uh, minutely, yeah. yes, but yes, for sure. That's crazy. But what they're starting to find out is that, you know, millions of years ago, this cave system actually was formed back in Pangaea. And then wow. when, when the world kind of broke apart, you know, um, it f reformed and, and kept its shape a little bit. And then I'm sure when the asteroid hit, other stuff kind of happened, aliens, like you said, and, <laughs> and other things. But uh, I thought that was really neat. Like um, the largest underground cave system in the world, 216 miles. That's going to be a lot of discovery we're going to yeah, find. Yeah, and I mean, this could be the key to a lot of answers that we, we just don't even know. Of course. Even down to our origins. Yeah. You know, it's kind of creepy. Yeah. Yeah, and who knows how much else is connected to the Mayan civilization, you know, and, and we could find other sites. You know, other knowing artifacts. the Mayans, they probably have a map of all these caves somewhere. Of course. Already, they probably held their breath and swam the whole yeah, thing. I know, yeah. it's crazy. Like, uh, th those, that, that civilization was absolutely nuts. But I thought that was really cool. And um, I, love, I, love, I love when we find things right in our own backyard that's just like, I never knew this was here for millions of years, and now we do. You know, I finally got over space. <laughs> And now I'm making you scared of Earth. Yeah, dude. <laughs> Yay! Yeah, dude. Let's, uh, <laughs> let's keep this rolling. Okay. What fuels you? All right. Uh, this week we got to talk to our good friend and our facilities manager, Brad Thibodeau, on the show uh, as one of our employee series. And um, we have so much fun. Make sure you turn into the episode tomorrow, guys. It's such a good time. But one of the things that Brad brought up, especially when we were asking him what fuels him, is the sense of community. And right. we've actually talked about this theme a couple times, and yeah. I think that every time that it's brought up, it's worth repeating. Yeah. Um, community isn't just where you find yourself. It's where you subplant yourself and, and, and what kind of... You can use community to fuel you. The people who surround you can make you a better person. Right. Do you agree? Absolutely. And I, I think the, you are the people that you continually interact with. I think so, too. I, know, I definitely think that. And we've talked about this before, but having having connections with people that are genuine is very, very important. And having those people that you have connections with be genuine people right. is even more important. Right. And the reason being is because that sense of community is even stronger. Yeah. And the thing, I, the one thing that I've, I, I've been thinking about community a lot recently, because that is, that is a, a big thing that fuels me as well. And the one thing I noticed that if I'm dealing with, you know, the winter blues. Yeah, which we or, all do. Or, you know, any kind of deficiency in in, uh, in happy hormones. I noticed that it, the, the one thing is that I feel less of a need to be part of a community. Right. Meaning that in order to, like, know that I'm truly happy or to come to the realization that I'm in a good place is when I want to be more of a part of a community. Yeah. And who knows, maybe we can go back to that fake it till you make it thing where even though you are down and you have a sense of wanting to push away from community, mm -hmm. maybe that's like you fake it and you become part of a community and you'll find yourself before you know it happier than you were. I think so. I also think that community is you know, something to rely on when you are down. Like I look at it as like, you know, if Absolutely. I'm, if I've got the blues yet, I'm surrounding myself with like-minded people or a community of people that I, you know, I kind of gravitate towards. I can be lifted up by their success, right? By their good feeling, right. you know? So like if I feel, I'm feeling down and a little bit blue yet you're having a great day, it might even me out a little bit, yeah. you know? And also, uh, the sense of community is something that, especially when you find one 
that you really feel like is a good fit for you, I think it's something that you, you, you put your claws into and you never let go. And I think that 100% um, tailors towards our guest, Brad, this week, because like we were saying, he's one of your oldest friends. Yeah. So you kept that community your whole life almost. Right. And here's here's something to build off that a little bit to show you how important community is. And I don't remember where I read and watched. I, I, I looked into this study quite a bit, but pretty much they were researching small communities mm -hmm. and trying to figure out um, which ones had the longest lifespan and why. And there's this little Japanese community outside of um, Osaka, Japan, uh -huh. and they have the longest lifespan of any other community out there. And they're trying to figure out why. And, you know, obviously their diet's pretty good, but right. so are a lot of other communities. Right. Um, but they found out that in this community, when you're born, you're pretty much assigned four to five other people um, that are your life friends, that you oh. have a built-in community as soon as you're born. And these four or five other people are there to, to, to pretty much everything that is theirs is yours and everything that is yours is theirs. So the success of the individual is the success of the whole group of four or five people. Wow. Yeah. And they were finding that because of this setup that the, the stress was so low that these people led happy, just stressless lives that and they, long lives that they just lived easily past 100 years old because they had four or five other people to rely on at any given time that were assigned to them at birth. Wow. Yeah. That's impressive. I mean, maybe that's not something that can be translated to all of humanity, but I never heard that before. That my mind's a little blown right now. Like ah. that's, that's that's pretty that's that's pretty interesting. Yeah, that's that's one thing that I've kept in mind for a long time. I think I read about that like 5 or 6 years ago and it was like Oh yeah, it is important to have a good group of people around you that you can rely on and they can rely on you and it gives you a sense of being gives you a sense of importance. Huh. Well, I mean, I can't stress enough how a good community can make everybody stronger and uh, especially yourself and it's a lot of times it's hard and but what's easier than finding that community i feel is being able to realize the detrimental community that you might be around in you know mm, yeah. I, I think we've all had that moment in our life where either a group of people or maybe a specific person where you hit a point where you're like i don't think i should associate with this person or this group anymore. And here's the tricky thing about those situations is that they might not actually be bad people. Well, of course not. I'm not. I'm not saying good or bad at that. I'm and, just but saying. But that's to that's you. the thing. If they were bad people, it'd be easy to recognize. I shouldn't be around these people. Right. But all of a sudden, you're around these these this community that might be who knows into drugs or just into a bad attitude, right? Or a bad philosophy in life that you just get caught up in, and you yourself become. Oh, you're not a bad person, but. You're kind of influencing the world badly. Yeah, and it's you're not the you that you think you are. Yeah, you're being influenced by you know your your surroundings, your community. Community is a big thing, and it was one of the things that Brad talked about that really draws him to a job and get, wakes him up in the morning and keeps him going to that. That makes job. sense to me. I mean, the the thing that drives me to want to do a good job here mm -hmm. is that sense of community. The fact that I don't want to let my friends down. Right. I mean, it's not the end all be all. I mean, in the end. I hold myself accountable Correct. and I want to do a good job because I want to feel good about it. Right. But there is a big part of that, that if I don't do a good job, the amount of people that I let down and those people are my community. And yeah. That's, that's a good drive driving factor and it's a healthy driving factor. Yeah. Yeah. So you got to just figure out who you want to be and who you want to surround yourself with and find that community. Speaking of community. Community shout out. Yeah, community shout out this week uh, goes to <clears throat> Eric S. Neitzel. There he is. <laughs> um, found Eric on Facebook, actually. Uh, he is a drone operator, which I think is really rad, and yeah. also a former public information officer for fire and emergency rescue. Um, and I found him because a video that he had posted, I think like a year or two ago, popped up randomly in my feed. Um, with Death Wish Coffee, and uh, it's great. It's just him out in the wilderness brewing up some delicious Death Wish and getting ready for the sunrise, and I'll play that for you guys right now. Do this. Yeah. 
Yeah, baby. So I got my coffee done and uh, the sun is just coming up. I got my trusty GoPro on a stick watching the sunrise. Gotta love New Mexico. Yeah, that was pretty cool. I love seeing um, literally coffee in the wild. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's a lot of fun. Uh, I, I like how he did it sophisticated cowboy style. Yeah, it wasn't just going to drink it out of the saucepan. Kind yeah. Of thing. <laughs> <laughs> Although yeah, I would in a yeah. pinch, you know. Yeah, he, uh, he definitely made you know his, his French press out there and uh, watched the sunrise. But what else was cool is I did a little digging on, on you, Eric, and... Uh, because as soon as I see drone operator, I'm like, Ooh, oh, what are you doing with that? And he has his own business where he gets footage for other businesses with drones and stuff oh, like that. Cool. But he has this real cool footage of um, wild horses, actually, which I'm going to play for you guys right now. And uh, it's really cool just to see. I always it's one of those animals that you forget are a wild animal. Yeah. You know, like because you see horses just on farms all the time. But like yeah. when you see them just in the wild, like in the woods, it's. It's pretty cool, and to be on a bird's eye view, literally on a drone, it's pretty rad. So uh, thank you, Eric, for loving Death Wish Coffee and posting about us. Uh, mugs up, community shout out this week, Eric S. Neitzel. And this week, just earlier today, actually, we did our first little product review, and there it is. Uh, we had actually a couple of you guys out there uh, show us and tell us about this, and we saw the video of the Bripe, that is the um, brewing pipe, as they call it, uh, go viral, actually, online. And uh, I, we didn't even know what we were getting into because I thought it was a completely different thing. And uh, so we uh, contacted the company, and the good folks over at Bripe sent us a couple to try. And earlier today, we did that just that. Yep. And we wanted to show you that footage right now. You might think we're being extra sophisticated, but today we're reviewing the Bripe. All right, so the Bripe, or brewing pipe, uh, is a pretty cool all-inclusive kit. We reached out to the, the fine folks over at Bripe, and they sent us a couple to try for you guys today. We've we're opening up right in front of you, and we'll show you what comes in the kit. First, you get the vessel, which looks like a pipe. It's deceiving. It's not. Um, and it's really nice, made out of copper uh, with um, a, the uh, cork on the, the stem there so you don't burn yourself when you're, uh, when you're lighting it. <laughs> and uh, how did you put the, the, the little... The, the inner nipple technology. Inner nipple technology there. and um, So the idea is that uh, you're hitting the flame underneath and the, the, the heat is dispersing evenly throughout the espresso shot. Yeah. And uh, that also comes with a nice stainless steel um, filter that has three different filters on this, on this, uh, this filter system, basically. And uh, so you can use a finer grind or a coarse grind for your coffee or your tea. And uh, that, that sits right nicely in the bripe itself. It also comes with a test tube to keep your uh, coffee grounds or your tea, your loose tea in um, outside of the pouch. It comes with a nice copper stand that uh, fits right on that inner nipple technology there. Um, Brilliant. So, so you can set it down after you've he heated it and you don't burn yourself. Uh, it also comes with um, probably the nicest part about this whole kit is the blue flame butane lighter it comes not filled so i filled it up off camera but um it's really really nice it's basically a torch yeah um and then finally the thermometer so you know how hot you are heating your concoction and then what it's cooling down to and the whole kit all together um you can buy right on briping.com i'll put that link up and uh right now it's a special price of 60 bucks for the whole thing step one you're going to take your stainless steel filter and you're going to place that in the pipe making sure that one of the three filters is covering the hole in the stem step two add your ground coffee or tea and fill the grind to the top of the inner cone the inner nipple technology step three add water to your bripe and uh, mix the water in the ground coffee. You're going to add it to the outside line on the copper. There's a, there's a tiny etched line there. You can add more water if you like, but that's the recommended amount. And then you stir it up. 
Step four, make sure your thermometer is in place and hold the bripe by the cork. Then be careful, use the butane blue flame lighter and heat it to 185 degrees. Should take about one to three minutes. Step five, turn off the lighter, place it on a non-flammable surface, not a cloth tablecloth like we just did, and um, replace the bripe onto the copper stand and let it cool down to 140 degrees. The bripe is going to be hot, so be careful. And now that it's sufficiently cooled, still pick it up by the cork and be careful. Take the thermometer out, and you're going to blow gently to mix it up, just like you're blowing bubbles. And now, D-Man, cheers. Cheers. And suck the coffee through the straw. Hmm. 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 Well, my first reaction is um, very much like uh, uh, Turkish coffee. Yeah, I mean, you're going to get a little bit of the grind in there. It's obviously not a perfect system, but... um. Has a full flavor spectrum on there. I taste the chocolate. I taste the cherry notes. Mm -hmm. I mean, you're really, you're really tasting Death Wish for what it is in here. Oh yeah. Plus a little bit of a penny taste. I can definitely say that um, I'm not, I'm not tasting a different shot of coffee than if I were to have a normal shot of Death Wish. Like it definitely, we pride ourselves on being the world's strongest coffee for a reason, not just the caffeine content, but the taste. And I think the taste remains. Yeah, it's bold in there, and it's it's still not bitter. Because um, mm. I think you're, you, since you have control over the uh, the temperature, you can actually get a uh, a decent shot of espresso out of this thing. I think so too. So, D man, pros and cons of this. Yeah. Um, I really think that they're marketing it towards the camping community. And I think that is the perfect community for it because if I don't want to be camping with a ton of pots and pans and make cowboy coffee the normal way, this is a perfect way to get a shot of, you know, delicious coffee right in the morning with little little fuss. Well, to counter that, Jeff, <laughs> if you're camping, where are you going to put this thing? On a rock? That seems a little dangerous. It does. And you definitely want to be careful where you do put it because you can't want, don't want to put it like in your tent or near anything flammable. In fact, like I said earlier, we're doing all of this on a tablecloth in the studio and we could have just burned ourselves yeah that. yeah um i do think that uh the flavor profiles there it makes a good shot of espresso you know basically is what it is like turkey like i said turkish coffee because you get a little bit of that grind in there um and it's definitely a a hip looking thing full disclosure when i first saw this go viral on the internet i thought it was hipsters smoking coffee yeah and it isn't you're drinking it but um it is kind of it is kind of neat. Well, Jeff, I think you're wrong. <laughs> I think uh, I don't think it's hip at all. All right. Um, I also think you do get the full flavor profile of Death Wish coffee, but I taste old pennies a little bit. Yeah. Right? And not only do I taste it, I I smell it on my yep. smell. It smells like old. Yeah, it smells like old. Smells pennies. like old pennies. Copper's used because it's a higher, highly conductive to the heat, so it'll heat up quicker and cool down faster. And it's all food safe, as it says right in the instructions. And I get all that, but yeah, you are having that kind of a little bit of a copper there. Again, as mm. a camping, can't be pick, can't really be picky if you're just out in the wilderness. Maybe you don't know how I camp, Jeff. I guess I don't. <laughs> um, you know what? Uh, I'll say something actually on the, the 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 con side when we were putting this together one of the things that i had a problem with was the filtration system right um uh there's three different sizes in the filter because you're you, as it says in the instructions you can use an espresso grind you can use just a normal drip grind or you can use coarse like tea yeah you know like your your loose tea and uh there's really no i maybe i'm just bad at it but looking at it only being able to dissertain it just from looking at it i can't tell which filter is larger and which one is smaller well to talk on that a little bit i mean we just drank it we, we got a few grinds we in our the mouth, middle one and yeah. we use just a regular ground bag of coffee so i think no matter what you're gonna get a few grounds in your mouth but you know what i have to say about that jeff you're gonna want that it yeah. gives you energy those are grounds of power yeah no i agree with that um so honestly 
I'm surprised. I went into this not really knowing what to expect. Again, I thought you were going to be smoking coffee. Yeah. Especially with the the torch that they give you and and the pipe and all that. So, um, Jeff, it, uh, tell me what you thought it was going to be a rating from 1 to 10, and then tell me what you actually think of it rating 1 through 10. I honestly thought, being that it was going to be smoking coffee, I thought it was going to be a 2. Yeah. And uh, I give it, I give it an eight, really, wow. like because I feel the coffee. I think it was a good taste, and like I said, practicality in a camping situation. All of this, all in just a little pouch like this. I think it's, I think it's a good product. Well, I agree with you with the uh, initial thought. I mean, even knowing that it was going to brew coffee for me here, I, th- I thought it was going to be pretty bad. But I will say it is a good shot of espresso. It's a cool thing to have on your countertop, especially Definitely. if you have a brass kitchen. This yeah. is the thing you want in your kitchen. Yeah. Um, it does look cool. I was just busting your balls. I do think it's kind of hip. <laughs> cool. So once again, go on over to briping.com. I'll put the link up right here. You can get your very own. I like bri- how they made it a verb. Go yeah. briping. Go briping. You can <laughs> you can get your very own kit right now for a special price, 60 bucks for the whole thing. And uh, tell them Deathwish Coffee sent you. Cheers. Oh, welcome back to the show. All right. So uh, we got some happy birthdays to dole out this week like normal. First up, an incredible sports athlete turning 57 years old. The great one, as he is called, (laughs) Wayne Gretzky. Um, multiple Stanley Cup winning hockey player. I mean, this guy brought so much attention to this sport. So much. I mean, he was like... Uh, I hate to make this comparison, but he was it. he was like the Lance Armstrong to to hockey. You know, nobody cared about balls. cycling. <laughs> ah. uh, rough, dude. Rough, I know. <laughs> <laughs> You're right, though. Like, I mean, it was at a time where hockey was all right. You know, it was out there in ESPN, but it wasn't as big as everything else. And then right. he made it a spectacle. Jeff, can you name any other hockey player? Um, uh oh. <laughs> Oh, yeah. I don't know his first name, but Messier. Uh, yeah, yeah. Messier. See, that's, that's my point exactly, right. is that this guy's name was on the mouth of everybody. He was everybody the, knew who Wayne Gretzky was. He was on the Wheaties box. He was, yeah. yeah. That, was he, the, that was the win it, huh? You got to get on the Wheaties you gotta. box. He, it was so good that not only did he bring multiple teams to the, to the finals, the Stanley Cup there, and win it, but um, he also holds records still to this day in the sport that ha- I'm not surprised, uh, that yeah. cannot be surpassed. Yeah, he is an incredible, incredible person. So happy birthday to him! Friday, January twenty sixth. On Saturday, January twenty seventh, one of my favorite comedians of all time, awesome. Patton Oswalt, is going to be forty nine years old. I love this guy. Yeah, I love this guy. Hilarious and very genuine. Yes, he really is. Um. Some of my favorite work that he's done is uh, he is famously the voice of the rat in Ratatouille, which yeah. is adorable and awesome. He His stand-up specials are always great. What was he, that show with the two babies watching TV and it was like skit shows? I don't know. Oh, man. I don't know. I got to look it up. But he's on Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. He's the narrator of the Goldbergs. He's everywhere. One of my favorite recent photos of him, though, is, is after he won um, the his Emmy uh, a little while back, he celebrated at Arby's, and there's this this famous photo of him <laughs> celebrating, oh. him anyway, which is so patent and so amazing. Um, I, I absolutely shorty's I, watching shorties. Shorty's watching shorties. There it is. Okay, I didn't even look it up. I just remembered. Right um, and I uh, absolutely love him. On Sunday, January twenty eighth, a uh, happy thirty seventh birthday to Elijah Wood. Uh, Happy 12th birthday. Yeah, I know. He <laughs> never seems to age. He always looks like he's 12. I uh, love that he's taking on like the creepy roles now. Yeah. There was a, oh man, I forgot the name of the movie. I'm forgetting everything today. Yeah. It was a re- really recent one where he's like obsessed with mannequins. Ooh, I don't know if I saw that. I think it might even be called Mannequin. I saw it on Netflix and Ooh. he is so creepy. Wow. He's so creepy. Um, One of my favorite <laughs> roles, and I know a lot yeah. of- I, I know a lot of people's favorite roles is obviously when he portrayed Frodo in the Lord of the Rings. And fun Perfectly. fact, fun fact, um, if you guys are Netflix uh, users, mm-hmm. it is now up on Netflix. My wife and I just watched it uh, last night. It had been a while since we've seen nice. the whole movie. It still holds up. It's still amazing. Dude, it's amazing. He's so good in it. Um, so happy birthday to him. On Monday, January 29th. Oprah, it's her birthday. You get a birthday. She's 64 <laughs> years old. Um, she has been making news lately because of her speech at the, I believe it was the SAG Awards. 
um, or the Golden Globes, where she had everybody riled up and everybody's like, Oprah for president now. I think that's a terrible idea. Yeah, don't get me started. Um, but uh, yeah, here's that here's that iconic, um, you get a car, <laughs> you get a car, you get a car. Our own Mike Brown actually got to meet her briefly when she announced the winners of the Intuit big game, small business big game. Um, and uh, we happened to win a Super Bowl commercial, which was a lot of fun. She gave us a Super Bowl. She was like, you get a Super Bowl yeah. <laughs> And then on Wednesday, January 31st, last day of January for 2018, two incredible musicians. One I know Dustin doesn't care about. Fat Mike from No Effects. I love No Effects. I met him once. I know. Yeah. He's going to be 51 years old. Um, I just, I've always loved No Effects. They're, they're, they're one of my favorite punk bands. And then also on Wednesday, January 31st, John Lydon, uh, who you might know from a thousand projects, but his most famous, obviously, is the Sex Pistols. And oh, there yeah. he is right there. That band. As the lead singer. Uh, he's going to be 62 years old. So happy birthday to all of them. <laughs> I smell a roast. Okay. So. I haven't even looked. Yeah. I haven't even looked. I'll turn the paper over. This week on The Roast. This is brand new. It's funny. The last couple weeks, we've been able to roast stuff that's in the news. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> it's in the news. And this was just announced from Nintendo. And it's called the Nintendo La Labo. Nintendo Labo. And I'm posing this as the roast because is this the death of video games? And the reason why I bring that up, and I'll be playing some of the um, trailer footage over as we're talking as well. But uh, the way I bring that up is because this is now an interactive build and play experience. And it pairs with the Nintendo Switch, which I think is an amazing console. Or amazing um, video game system, basically. Because it can be console or handheld. I think that's great. But... Do I need an engineering degree to play a video game now? And I think that's where the disconnect's going to be. Because basically what the Labo is, is as you can see in some of these pictures, is you get you buy, you buy a kit like this piano, and then you build all of the pieces out of cardboard. And then you put your Switch inside of it, and then lo and behold, you're playing a piano-based video game. Sounds fun. Sounds like you're getting your kids getting all, you know, engineery. But... Where's the end game for this? First of all, it's set release for April 20th, and there's two different kits. One is the $70 variety kit, which includes like the piano, the RC car, the motorbike, the fishing rod, the house. And then there's the robot kit, which you see behind me, which is $80, and it lo and allows you to create a robot, which I'll so show you some of that video as well. Um, $80 for something, first of all, that I think I'm okay at creating things, but I'm going to screw that up. And second of all, it's made out of cardboard. So where is, where is that disconnect from games to reality going to happen? You know, is it here? I've got a picture right up now of the Connect. We've had Connect with a Wii where you get out of your chair and you, you become the right. controller. And those are fun for a minute, but they lose their luster. Well, it's a whole thing like, be active and play video games. Which I get. Um, and uh, it's funny. Uh, both you and I absolutely loved the Connect. I might put a video yeah, of that in it. there. Yeah, go for um, it. I don't care. Go for it. Mind you, the, if you do put in footage right here in this area right here, yeah. it's from a long time well, ago. Yeah, right when the Connect <laughs> came out, actually. But um, where, again, where is this kind of technology, where does this exist? So I'm still trying to figure out what the hell's going on here so basically what you do is you buy your kit like let's go back to the piano you buy this and you put it all together right and then because you've made this and you connect it not it but you connect the game system up to what this is you can then play the piano keys and it actually makes piano sounds now i have two things i want to say about this within the roast context First of all, teach your kid piano. Yeah. You know? Totally. Why do I have to play a video game to play the piano? Teach him piano. Second You don't of think this would be a good way to like intro into piano if you're you're a little kid, you're a little eight year old kid? This Maybe, might be but an eight year old's not building this out of cardboard. It's multiple pieces that you all have to you have to watch a video just to make. And when you finally made it, 
now you're playing with it. Now, I bet you guys are probably thinking of the exact same thing I am. I've played with cardboard before. Hey, D-Man, your jo- half your job is playing with cardboard because you design our boxes. I wouldn't say half, but okay. yeah. But Some of your of job <laughs> is designing our boxes. How well do boxes hold up after folding them and, uh, and putting them together and taking them apart and... It depends. Are you talking E flute or B flute corrugated? <laughs> yeah, right. Okay, <laughs> I'm just kidding. Either way, this shit would fall apart almost. Fall apart. So now, especially you're spending... with your stupid sweaty hands, so done so. So now you're spending, you know, and let's go back. to And this it doesn't kit. look like there's an aqueous coating on this. Right. This is bad corrugated. <laughs> <laughs> you're spending. Let's say you're spending it on the the variety kit. You're spending seventy dollars on the variety kit, which allows you to build multiple different things, but. I bet you, now I could be wrong, but I bet you multiple parts work with multiple things. So I could make the piano, but if I want to then make the motorbike, maybe some of these pieces I have to repurpose to the motorbike build, right? Mm-hmm. So now you're taking apart cardboard, putting it back together. Oh, yeah, that's not going to hold up. It's not going to hold up. And it's look at some hold. of these cardboard pieces. They're circular, you know? Like, I mean... And it looks like they all fit into each other. Like, it's a good idea on paper, but once you... Oh, it's cardboard? Mm-hmm. It's not lasting. And it's, good luck if you have a kid and a dog. Oh, yeah. Because I've owned dogs before, and my dog would think that this was the brand new toy you I brought home You might as well take him. an $80 bill, cover it in peanut butter, and give it to your dog. You That's know? what I mean. Another thing, I actually was talking about this with some of the production guys, and uh, one of the one of them brought up, which I thought was uh, I, something I never even thought about. The minute this goes on on the market... Someone's going to take the plans and put them on the internet, huh. right? Because then you could just print them out on your own cardboard. Well, listen, on the, the logistical side of oh, things. Oh, here it comes, here. everybody. Okay, I'm looking at this now. What do you think it's about? Mm-hmm. Yay big? Mm-hmm. This piece right here is probably after, you know, look thinking about their order quantities, it's probably about 20 cents worth of corrugated cardboard. Right. Now, it's a lot of intricate pieces, but all that is is tooling to cut out those specific pieces. So it's a one-time purchase of like probably $1,500 per tool. Right. So you're talking about a fraction of a cent per item. So you're looking at like $0.21 cents worth of corrugated here that you're buying for what? $80? $80. But again, wow, there's interior. Like here, we don't want to spend a lot of money. Buy this new thing. Um and uh, yeah, it's made out of cardboard. Good luck. The other thing is, is there's interior to these that this is where like my mind goes. I wish I could build something like this because I think I would probably screw it up. Because if you look even on this still photo on the left and right of the switch there, you see the play button and the record button. Those buttons actually work. What? How is what? Because there's interiors of it. And I'll show you. This is the robot build, this other one. And you can see the in- inside there. With the the wires and all that stuff that like allow you to you know manipulate the robot that you are in the video game, yet you're gonna have to build all of these wires and make them all work. I know just from my days as a model kit maker, you know, like I was okay at that, you know, like or or um, Tinker Toys that you could make work, or the Legos yeah. that you could make with uh, forget what they were called, but the Legos that had the motorized Legos in them when we were kids. You remember those? Uh, uh, connect. Was it connect? It was yeah, like it was something like that. Connector. Again. Erect to connect. If you like erector set, that oh, was yeah, one yeah, of them. Yeah. yeah. If you misplace one piece, the whole yeah. thing doesn't work. This is like just in case you wanted to spread your frustration on IKEA to to your kids. Right. There you go. And I'm sure you're gonna get a lot of missing pieces out of these too. Yeah. Oh my God, it's gonna be a nightmare. I just, you know, everything all- about this seems like a bad idea. I don't know. Who came up with this idea? But worst of all, I don't know who followed through with this idea. Well, build and and play experiences are like all the new rage lately. Yeah. And uh, this whole cardboard thing. You, you get something made out of cardboard and then you utilize it with a device. And it makes... It makes your play experience better, but I just I maybe I'm becoming a crotchety old man, but I'm just like just let damn me play you my kids. Video yeah, games. just let me play my video games. You know? I remember I got a Wii when they first yeah, came the out. The bathroom's right there. <laughs> <laughs> I got a Wii when they first came out and I thought it was amazing. And I got one of my favorite games that they re released um for the Wii system, which was um Metroid. And uh um I was really excited about it. And you could sit down and you could play the game with your Wii controller, you know, but then there were parts of the game that you had to be the controller 
And one of them was you had to take the paddle, and every time you got to a door, you had to, like, extend your arm to, like, make the character grab onto the door, and then you had to turn the door handle specific ways to unlock the door. Sounds annoying. I literally made it through two doors, and I'm like, I'm tired. I don't want to play I mean, anymore. that's kind of how I see this thing playing out. You're going to buy it for your kid. Yeah. They're going to try to put something together once, probably spend 10 minutes on it, and then give the hell up. And then what, what'd what you get out of that? You spent $80 right. for nothing. For nothing. For a bunch of crappy cardboard. I just... Listen, if you spend your money on it, you deserve to lose it. Yeah. It's a bad idea. Don't invest in it. It's Whereas something like the Switch or an Xbox or a PlayStation or something like that should last you years and years and years. Technology is getting better and better and better. But we're, we're gone are the days of the Nintendo that you have to blow on, endlessly blow on the games to make them work, you know, after owning it I miss for a those month. Days. But I'm just saying, like, our tech, you know, even the Red Ring of Death on Xbox doesn't happen as much anymore. They, yeah. They're making the tech to last because they know that not only do you want to have this system for years, they want you to play the system for hours on end without you worrying about it dying. Right. You're going to play this for hours on end. It's going to, it's going to literally wear and tear. I mean, it's obviously a bad idea. I really think this was something that was like, okay, it's not the best idea, but we're not going to lose money because it's so cheap to make. Of course. And we're going to get a, a handful of idiots to buy it. Yeah. So it's really like we can't lose except for their marketing a horrible product. So I don't know. Nintendo, you lost me on this one. Yeah, dude. I'm mad. I, I just. And I, it's crazy that Nintendo themselves put this out. That's just. Yeah. Madness. A horrible idea. This is not going to last. This is going to be one of those things that that's brought up 10 years from now. And we'll laugh at. I can't believe they came up with that. Mm -hmm. And we're just roasting it now for y'all. Yep. I'm, Ahead I mean, of the it's, curve. It's exactly the way I wanted this to go. I'm glad I didn't tell you about this. <laughs> awesome. D-Man's Death Wish Update. Brought to you by Death Wish Coffee. All right, D-Man. Um, well, I'm just going to start it off because I know we said it last week. You posed the question. Guess what chocolate? Guess what chocolate. <laughs> and if you guys missed the blog, uh, the, we're going to tell you the chocolate. There it is. It's the cherry java bark. I don't know why the, this run tastes better. Yeah. I, I had a little bit the other day. I was impressed. Yeah. It tastes That dried tart cherry mixes perfectly with our Dark roast beans. It's yeah. really like spaghetti and meatballs. It's really, it's really good. Um, and we're going to be releasing that before Valentine's Day, so you guys will have enough time to be able to get it and then give it as a gift if you'd like or just devour it all yourself. Yeah, one like or the I other. Uh -huh. It's up to you. Um, what else do we got? What else is on the, the market here? Well, you might have heard it on uh, Mike Brown's Facebook Live the other day. He spilled a few beans. Hey, intended. when you're the owner of the company, you can tell all the secrets you want. Yeah, sure. Whatever. He did. He <laughs> told a bunch of secrets on that Facebook Live. Well, one of those secrets, Jeff, is the Irish cream coffee. Now, this is barrel brand whiskey aged coffee. And if you don't believe me, there it is. Right. And this is... Whiskey aged coffee, yeah, mixed with an Irish cream flavor, a little bit of chocolate in mm -hmm. there, a little bit, yeah. And this is really good, man. Yeah, it came out really good. Uh, I tried it actually for the first time yesterday. Um, we're just um, getting done roasting it. We're gonna bag it up and get it ready for around the St. Patrick's time area. I have a date. I'm not gonna give it to you. That'll be the that'll be the good time to release something like that. But like, if you've ever followed our barrel brands before, that's always what we do. We do a limited run because we can only fit so many beans in a barrel and we can right. only use so many barrels. This one will be quite limited too. I got a final count on it today. It's very limited. And let me tell you, this is going to like give Rumball a run for its money. Yeah. it's. I really enjoy the flavor of I it. I kind of, I mean, it, it's easy for me. I like this a lot more than Rumball. I do too, 100%. I really do. Um, I'm a whiskey guy through and through anyways. Yeah, but, yeah. But um, obviously no alcohol in it. It's just got those notes. Um, and it's really, it's just, it's something new. We're always trying to do something new for you guys. Yeah, you know that the, the burn of that whiskey flavor that you get in your regular uh, barrel brand whiskey coffee is really rounded out by those Irish cream yeah. notes. It, I mean, it's it works the way... 
like an, an Irish coffee should. Yes. You know, where it's like it's alcoholic, but it's tasty. Yeah. It's very good, but it's not actually alcoholic. Right. <laughs> um, so we're really excited about that. Keep your, your eyes and ears to the ground, and we'll obviously Don't tell you. Don't keep your eyes to the ground. <laughs> we'll obviously <laughs> tell you more. Keep your chin up. <laughs> when, we get, when we get closer to that release on that, but we're excited about that. <laughs> Uh, so I don't know if you guys are sports fans out there. Go Eagles! <laughs> but there is a little a little contest of the football variety happening very soon. The Super Bowl, the Superb Owl, is going to be happening, and uh, it's always a fun time around here because a couple years ago we were lucky enough to win a literal commercial in the big game, and I I. It still boggles my mind that that happened. Like, yeah, man, it's crazy. It's crazy. All our lives were changed, and yeah. we're still feeling it today. And once again, we can't thank you guys enough for getting us there. Yeah, it's but all hey, your. It's all your fault. It's all your fault. <laughs> this is why my life sucks. <laughs> <laughs> it's why our life is great. And uh, yeah, here's it still from the commercial. If you haven't seen it, um, it is still available online. You can find it. But if you haven't seen it, the best way to find it, we're going to tell you right now, which is really exciting, on January 31st, which is the Tuesday leading up to, or the I believe it's the Wednesday, leading up to yes. um, the Super Bowl, which is going to be that, that following Sunday, uh, 8 p.m. on CBS, they're going to run their annual show that literally runs down the best Super Bowl commercials. It's hosted by Boomer Esiason and Daniela Rua, and uh, they've been doing it the last couple of years. Do you know who to... those people are? Uh, yeah, Boomer Esiason is a very famous uh, quarterback of football. Oh, uh, okay. And Daniel Rua, I believe, is on, um, I hope I don't get this wrong, CSI. I believe she's on CSI uh, okay. or a Law & Order. I get those two confused. Yeah, well, big surprise. Um, uh, and uh, but they host it every year. They run down all the different Super Bowl commercials, and ours is going to be on it. We're gonna we're gonna be mentioned at least within the countless other Super Bowl commercials. They're gonna do a tribute. Well, the one I'm really excited about. They're gonna do a tribute to the famous Michael Jordan, Larry Bird, 1993 McDonald's commercial where they play horse, and they're like off the off the moon, right. or, you know, yeah. through the window, you know, nothing but net, that yeah. one. So yeah. they're going to play that one again, which is a lot of fun. I, I love the idea of somebody sitting down and watching commercials. And then and, going to a and commercial then going break. Into commercial break, <laughs> coming back into commercials. But uh, we're really excited, and we, we're really excited that, you know, it, we're at least going to get a soft mention. I don't know if they'll play the whole commercial. I hope they do, because it's only like 30 seconds It's the long. best Super Bowl commercial ever. It I hope they do. It is the best, best Super Bowl commercial. If they know what's good for them, they ever. will. Yes. I'm coming for you. Yes. Dan Danielle R Rua. Rua. Yeah. You. Boomer. Esiason. Esiason. I'm coming for you. There you go. Better play that whole commercial. Yeah. Look at I'm but coming yeah, for you. Uh, we'll tell you guys more, obviously, as it gets closer. But yeah, mark your calendars January 31st, 8 p.m. on CBS. Uh, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Uh, finally, what's going? What's happening this week, D-Man? Well, you know what? We have a few extra death cups around. Yeah, we do. Oop, there we go. Super Bowl. Oh, that's Super not the, Bowl. That's not the right slide. Super Bowl. And uh, we have a few extra around for a reason, because we had this sale uh, planned ahead. Yeah. And we're ready for it, and we're going to have a buy two, get one free, 10-count death cup sale. Cannot beat that. I mean, come on. You like, get 30 cups for the price of 20. I'd buy 60. Yeah. Right? You get yeah. 60 for the price of 40. Yeah. And if by chance you accidentally buy two, that third one will get added on automatically. Totally. So we got you covered. Um, but this is always a great sale for us. We yeah. always see them fly out the door. So if uh, if you're looking to stock up on your capsules, now's the time to do it. Yep. Tomorrow. That that hits tomorrow, you guys. Um, well, we always love doing little deals like this when we can. And uh, this one's going to be the first one that we're doing of probably many this year, but because uh, we do like to, we like to give you guys as many options as possible to get as much delicious, delicious caffeinated goodness. And a little side note here, uh -oh. Jeff. Um, these bags, uh -huh. we packed the last of these bags. Whoa! Um, getting ready for the sale. Yeah. So there are no longer any of these bags in this warehouse, meaning that after we go through all of these. 
um, we're going to be switching to our K cup boxes. There you go. Which, I don't know if you uh, guys heard that, but we yeah. are. We're going to get away from the bags and go to the boxes. And the reason being is because we started getting on retail shelves more. We got to be up there with all the other K cups so you can find us easily. Yeah. And it makes sense, anyways. And I'll tell you what, this box is fine. And the reason being is because I did it. Yeah. <laughs> um, now we're excited about going to boxes. Uh, like you said, uh, hopefully in 2018, you're going to see us on a ton more shelves, a ton more stores all over, all over everywhere. And, uh, yeah, everywhere. nobody, nobody uses bags. Uh, you know, everybody's got their K cups and boxes. So we gotta, we gotta not, we're not conforming. We're just, you know, we're leveling the playing field. You're still going to walk down that aisle and you're gonna be like a, a black box with skull and crossbones. Yeah. I must buy said thing. Yeah. Yeah, but, tells me not to drink it. Yeah, put it in here. Yeah, but uh, we'll uh, we'll be in boxes after the. So this is not only a great time to get your death cups, but it'll be the last time you can get them in bags. Yeah, so it'll be like a little bit of a send off. I mean, there might be some around afterwards, right? But uh, yeah, we'll, well, you'll be seeing that switch pretty soon. I'm pretty excited to get that out to everybody. But it's been looking great on the uh, retail shelves. Yeah, have you seen pictures of it? It looks, I have. It looks great up there. I have. Man. I've awesome. actually seen it in the store and everything. They look wonderful yeah so we're really excited about that and we got all sorts of more stuff to tell you guys but you got to tune in next week for more news that's the show thanks so much for watching guys last time share this feed comment share in the comments you'll not only win this mug the abe lincoln mug signed by d-man and myself you'll also get the matching decanter to go along with it because we just so happen to find another set kicking around. We wanted to give it to you guys because what are we going to do with it? Yeah, smash yeah, it. Smash it. I don't know why. I just want to break the shit out of these mugs. Probably because it's like the worst thing you could do. Yeah. And everything in my brain is like, smash it. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so share the feed, comment, share. We'll pick a lucky winner right after we sign off. Thanks so much for watching, guys. Thanks for your shares. Yeah. Thanks for your comments. Yes. Um, keep keep tuning in every single week, and we'll keep doing the show for you. And make sure you tune in tomorrow for the podcast, and that features our very own facility manager, Brad Thibodeau. Or as I like to call him, Tippy Toes. Tippy Toes. <laughs> awesome. Well, uh, hope you guys have a wonderful day, and we'll see you guys next week. Mugs up and cheers. Bye. This has been Fueled by Deathcast, a Deathwish Coffee Company podcast production. Thanks for listening.